Our top story is, of course, the race to the moon, which is heating up. India is gearing up to make history. Its lunar spacecraft, Chandrayaan-3, is all set for launch. India's largest rocket, the LVM-3, stands assembled at the Sati Dhawan Space Centre in Andhra Pradesh. It will take Chandrayaan-3 to the moon. Our next report looks at how India aims to achieve new heights, sealing the country's place in the Space Leaders Club. Moon is believed to be the symbol of love. From poets to musicians, everyone has romanticized the moon. It is a source of inspiration for them. And for scientists, moon is a mystery which they want to solve. Back in the late 1960s, the world's two superpowers, the US and USSR, were contesting against each other to conquer the moon. In 1969, the USSR made its second attempt to test fire its own moon rocket known as N1. And in the Soviet era as well, Yuri Gagarin became the first person to go into space. Although USSR's attempt to put a man on the moon was never fulfilled, but the US was able to achieve this feat when its Apollo 11 mission took one giant leap for mankind. And now the space race is getting crowded. Another world superpower has entered the race to explore space. The US, Russia, China have already put their stamp on space. To give them competition, India has also entered the space race. The Indian Space Research Organization is gearing up for the highly anticipated launch of Chandrayaan-3, its third lunar mission. Chandrayaan-3 will be landing near the lunar south pole. The south pole of the moon remains largely unexplored. It poses difficulties that no other missions have faced. But India is ready to take the challenge head-on with Chandrayaan-3. It will also become the fourth country to conduct a soft landing on the moon. Only the US, China and Soviet Union have achieved this feat so far. What is India's lunar aircraft going to do? It has three main objectives. First, to land safely on the lunar surface. Second, to conduct rover operations. And lastly, it will conduct scientific experiments on the moon. Now, Chandrayaan-3 will deliver a lander and rover to the lunar surface. The rover will explore, take samples, collect information for 14 Earth days. The moon mission is going to cost ISRO only 615 crore rupees, that is around 75 million dollars. Hollywood space movies like Interstellar and Gravity were more expensive than this. ISRO is known for its low-budget space missions. India's Mars orbiter Mangalyaan was a massive success in 2013. It cost ISRO only 470 crore rupees, that is roughly 57 million dollars. Chandrayaan-2, India's second lunar exploration mission, was worth 800 crore rupees or 97 million dollars. India is emerging as a key player in the global space sector. Excitement is high for the launch of Chandrayaan-3. Will India make history? The countdown has begun. Stay tuned. Bureau Report, Vion, World is One. Our senior correspondent Siddharth MP has been with us through this. He is again joining us live from Sri Harikota in Andhra Pradesh, which is the launch site of ISRO's Chandrayaan-3. Siddharth, one thing that probably every space enthusiast, if I may take the liberty to use that term, has wondered is man already landed on the moon in 1969. Yes, there were technical problems, uh, you know, with further lunar landings, which you have so well elucidated in your previous chat with me. What we want to know now is why is there this renewed enthusiasm to further explore the moon? Uh, Isha, thanks for the question. So let me start by telling you that uh, Moon has never ceased to uh, wonder mankind and Moon has never ceased to enthuse mankind. So even today when little children are being fed, they means they showed the Moon and then, you know, they fed meals and told stories. And scientists are no different. Their curiosity knows no bounds. So the reasons why Moon is, re uh, you know, there's renewed interest for lunar exploration are many reasons. One, uh, now there's also a lot of private space companies. What we've seen over the last decade and a half is that there's been 
so many private space companies that have come up all of them are funded or most of them are funded by maverick billionaires mostly in the west so you have uh, elon musk's spacex you have uh, jeff bezos's company uh, which is uh, uh, planning to build a space station known as orbital reef they're also building uh, rockets under the brand name blue origin you have sir richard branson exploring space tourism so when private companies come into space there is more competition there is more opportunity and there is more reason to explore in addition to this let's look at also the government run space agencies like nasa uh, japan's jaxa europe's european space agency and india's isro most of these agencies um, have fixed goals but what happens is time and again these goals are reviewed and look at the moon with renewed uh, interest and vigor they understand one thing very clearly that in future when you know earth has to or humankind has to become multiplanetary or explore deeper into space moon is our nearest neighbor nearest celestial body earth's natural satellite 3.84 lakh kilometers away it's not too far for a rocket actually because if you use a really powerful rocket like the saturn which apollo used uh, america used for the apollo mission you can reach there in perhaps 5 days of course india's rocket isn't as capable but you can get there in 40 days so when you have this kind of capability future when you want to explore further and deeper into space moon could be your midpoint moon could be your outpost in space you can perhaps have a colony then there are so many problems on earth for which perhaps solutions may exist on the moon mm -hmm. energy is a major problem nuclear energy has its advantages and disadvantages carbon fuels we all know uh, a lot of disadvantages a lot of talk about you know uh, weaning away from carbon fuels but at the same time there's theories there are you know propositions that perhaps there could be elements on the moon lunar dust and lunar rocks they could contain some mystery element that could solve the energy crisis on earth you know there could be several sciences that emerge then of course the discovery of water on the moon some of which was also credited to chandrayaan 1 and chandrayaan 2 india's own missions when you find water that planet becomes or that planet or celestial body becomes mm. all the more attractive to space agencies and explorers because the moment you have water you realize that you right. know at some point of time some type of life could have existed and you can create artificial uh, you know shelters there and live there uh, perhaps when that technology is ready Right I was going to ask you what is the kind of science that is expected to emerge from this mission but I think you have pretty much covered that now India as we know has undertaken one mass mission and this is the third lunar mission what I want to know is why is it so important to do such science missions in the first place to tell you about the importance of one kind of mission let's uh, trace back the history of isro isro has officially been in existence since 1969 so more than 60 years in existence but for a large part of these 60 years isro has been doing what are known as missions of national importance which means india has certain needs to predict weather to be able to you know cater to the strategic needs of the military to provide communication solutions to be able to do land surveys to survey our resources these are the basic needs you know that are used for governance and used by by the indian government to make the lives of people better and this is what makes television broadcasting possible this is what makes atms possible this is what makes so many of our contemporary technologies which we take for granted possible but once in a while to you know invigorate the scientific community once in a while to actually inspire millions of young children inspire potential scientists you need to do a science mission to explore the unknown that is why missions like mangalyaan chandrayaan are undertaken because this is not a routine mission you do one of these kind of missions perhaps once in 5 years once in 10 years but when you do that it brings the entire nation together because it's not a routine satellite launch routine satellite launches today happen almost every month you know these launches have become so common that um, it, it it's also so commonly reported in the media because these are routine launches for a certain fixed purpose but chandrayaan and such missions are special because you are going to places that are rarely visited you are going in search of unknown and there is a lot of mystery in world and this is a national uh, pride and this is also a national project in the sense that uh, it brings everyone together with a sense of pride and patriotism that india is heading as far and india wants to do this feat and of course this comes after a setback in chandrayaan 2 so there is renewed vigor and enthusiasm that this time isro will be able to get it right and india will be able to be the fourth nation to soft land on the moon that's the kind of optimism it creates among the masses Thank you Siddharth for on that optimistic a uh, note we have to let you go but I'm pretty sure you'll be with us through all of this thank you so much for joining us